Hello, hi, how are you today? I'm Patricia. Welcome to my channel, Twin Flame Reconnection. Do you ever feel ignored? Feel like you're not being seen? I see you. Is it triggering you? We're in an energy where being ignored, it is floating up to the surface and people are getting triggered, whether we like it or not. And there's something to do about it. But some of this is in your childhood. Do you feel invalidated, overlooked? We have a lot of this going on. Why is that? Things can't be shoved under the rug anymore. If you felt pukey in the past few weeks, this is because some of this has to well up. It can't get shoved down into your gut anymore. You can't put it into your sacral area and go put it into someone else either or them into you. Do you feel like you're being taken advantage of and then they're ignoring you? And who is they anyway? They're people too. Or are they people? Yes, they're people. We're all people here. So what is this all about? Do you feel ignored? Have you had instances from your childhood? And it could be something so simple like, Mom, I'm cold. You're not cold. And there you are, just like going... Am I crazy? Is it any wonder why sometimes we've been lied to? Like, where do babies come from? Oh, uh, a big giant bird brings them and delivers them. Okay, now it might be hard to explain things to a child, but the truth always prevails, right? And these are some of the very small reasons why do we feel ignored. What about large scale reasons? Like there's a drought in somebody's country and they need help. Can we continue ignoring? Now, here's how twin flames have to roll. You have to work on you first, then you and your twin, and then the rest of the people. Okay, that's how it has to be. But let's look at the good and the bad of how people deal with this. You know, like how are they coping? This is my bad list. Okay, bad. Okay, and it's not, it doesn't mean naughty, but these are not productive ways. How do you cope? Is it surface to others and you're people pleasing and you're tending to everyone else but you and they are draining out your energy and then you think they're toxic and they are toxic vampires and on and on and on. And next thing you know, you're a martyr. You're in your martyrdom. You're not in your twindom. You're not in your kingdom or your queendom. You are a martyr. And this is really prominent amongst people who are raised with certain religious <clears throat> Catholic upbringings, <laughs> not just Catholics. There's a lot of people, a lot of religions. I pray to Shiva, please take me. Yeah, because you're feeling it. You're feeling like a martyr, like you've made all this other sacrifice. For what? To be ignored, to be invalidated. Do you erase yourself? Now, we've all met people where somehow they seem like a non-entity. You know, there's no one home there. Why is that? Those are dispirited people. In other words, there's usually been some deep trauma that's happened to them. And they're right back here for this incarnation to get it and not just cope. Okay? Come in pick up the beautiful sparkling facets of themselves and no longer erase themselves. Is this you? Is this you? Well, sometimes it seems like no matter what I do, it's like people don't see me or they just see me superficially. They don't know I have hopes and dreams. I know, right, Barbie? They made a whole movie about you. And guess what? Some of your hopes and dreams came out and some of your struggles came out. And it doesn't just happen because the package she's in in this life, she could have had a different package in another life. How do we know? I know these things and we want to help people with this. What happens when you're ignored and it starts to trigger you and you feel invalidated and overlooked? Well, you can also have suicidal ideations. 
that you further internalize. So even as much as your gut is pulling this stuff out, because you can't keep that stuff in your gut anymore, you are in a process that wants you to be unsick. Okay, not just coping. So what about the bad? Let's take a look at this. Okay, the bad stuff. Okay, and this goes way beyond psychology. This isn't even pop psychology. This is twin flame ascension. This is how you cut to the chase and get where you're going. Using your light body, using who you are, using your divine connections. Because your divine connections, they have no more use for this stuff. We're going to go out and get obliterated. It's Friday night. It's our reward. We're going to get hammered. We're going to do the combo effect. We're going to drink drugs, smoke. We're going to do everything. We just want to obliterate ourselves until it's just a habit and you don't even know which came first, the chicken or the egg. This is a question I get a lot. With human angelics, which came first, the addiction or the pain that you needed to numb with the addiction? Well, I can answer that. It is the pain. It is the disconnection from our higher selves, our higher dimensions, our heart. The things that we've kind of been forced to do. Has it been to hurt other people? Because it's not really our inclination. Has it been, you know, to go to war and hunt and track people and, you know, slay them? I mean, people like to say this stuff and jest, but we've really had to do it. Why? And then we got to get obliterated because we've hurt our own selves. We really have. Are we ignoring our own self? Are we going to get high? Because these things make us feel low and affect our self-worth. So we're just going to get high and kind of be high all the time. Okay? Because the pain is too much. Pain is real pain. I had this argument with my guides because they were trying to give me that false philosophy that, well, pain is just, it's illusion. No, it's not. It is real. Visceral pain is real. A fall through the dimensions is real. That causes real pain. Being hurt, being rejected, being ignored and invalidated, it hurts. We have to start being kind, but it goes beyond that because we have to remove these wounds. We have to get rid of it. We have to really stop coping and start up. Okay, what do other people do? Ooh, they want to get in a fight. They feel the attention. They feel like nobody's seeing them, and by God, someone will see them. Okay, it's easy to rile people like this. And this happens to men a lot. They get used, they get taunted, coerced, or even seduced into doing something they would normally not do, like assassinate someone, okay? Or take a swing at someone because they're being goaded, okay? That too, you know, bullies look for this fight. Why? Because they've got no emotional regulation. It's all built up. Or they want to argue, ever meet people that their primary emotion is just anger. It's their prevalent thing because that's their gasoline. They live on it. They need more of it. They don't know what they're going to do unless they fight and argue and like live in duality where there's good guys and bad guys, never even realizing that maybe sometimes they're not being the good person. And taking it out on the rest of us, other forms of self-sabotage, screwing up your job interview, kind of on purpose, not on purpose, on purpose. What do people do deliberately because they're self-sabotaging? They get into a new relationship, whatever that relationship is, work, play. I did that a lot. You did. Yeah, I just assumed people were going to have an attitude and, and I kind of didn't give it a chance. And then somehow, I don't know, it's almost like without anything, I talked myself out of a job. Well, take heed. The jack market is picking up and you still have your gifts, talents, skills, and self-worth. 
I just don't know how to stop it. How do I stop, you know, doing this to myself? Right. Some people do cut off their nose to spite their face. And the key is your light body. Okay. Doesn't just happen to men. It happens to women too. Gender hating, having attitudes, it happens, okay, because we've been hurt. We've all hurt each other. This big planet Earth is sometimes like a tiny gerbil cage where we're all like beep, 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 you know, like snipping and snapping and biting each other. Self-sabotage, self-harm, self-harm, right? Oh, man, I did some of that stuff. I really got messed up. I, I didn't tell anyone, but I have neuropathy. I cut myself sometimes. You do? Oh, well, I can tell you, yes, just talk to someone. We're here to help. Whatever pains have happened to you, whatever things you've had to resort to, okay? Me too? Yes. Whatever things you've had to resort to, we can make it go and be a part of your past, even if it's this life, if it's your childhood, okay? Self-harm. What are those forms of self-harm? And again, the suicidal feeling that you further, further internalize and other, all of these things that also cause internal pain and keep the feelings internalized. Now, feelings can be actions, set things in motion. They can be very good. We got to bypass all this stuff and unplug you from this. So here is what I want to tell you. Once you had your awakening, the parts of you that are truly angelic, okay? And that's a question for people. And maybe if you're like this, even if you're like this, have you ever had someone say to you, you're an angel? And you kind of wondered, like, maybe it's true. I mean, I do feel these other kind of, you know, other parts of myself, other gifts I have. Parts of what we call supernatural, but maybe it's a superpower, right? I'm going to tell you this. Angels bite back. We push back. We create. We have to create solutions we can't do the same old things. We can't do all this stuff anymore, okay? You have to start from somewhere, okay? All this, Rome wasn't built in a day. You're not going to dismantle it in a day. I wish I could. I wish I could do a fairy dance and just, you know, wave my magic wand. You have to be proactive because within this is a bit of your past. It is ancestry. It's like what how have your ancestors been ignored or invalidated okay you could take some countries that based on you know where they're at what the customs were you carry that over to a new place and suddenly it doesn't fit and yet what's happening here how do you take the good and leave the bad behind you Okay, I'm not here to bash anyone's culture because I truly believe that every culture has contributed. It has helped build up, even if it was, uh, you know, like the rise and fall, like rise and fall of the Roman Empire, rise and fall of the Persian Empire, rise and fall of the Japanese Empire, right? Some of that stuff, yeah, he had to keep order in the chaos, but some of it's so oppressive. And guess what? Your class your cast, you got ignored, invalidated, overlooked. This is where we are in the throes of it. We're in some of the death throes of it, okay? Well, I feel very invalidated. I've had to fight for everything that I've ever had. I worked so hard. I expressed so much excellence in myself, yes. And I'm so glad you're here. I'm so glad that you incarnated, but they left you for dead. They left you to bleed out. You had to be back here. You had to be reincarnated, rebirthed right where things did not go well for you in order to renew, be the Phoenix, rise up. Oh, 
So I encourage you, let's get to work. Let's roll up our sleeves. Come on, roll up your sleeve. I'm ready, okay? Now, while these are little illustrations, okay, everyone has something. Everyone has these, you know, as they say, peeling the layers of the onions. But peeling the layers does not integrate your new light, light body. It does not open your new chakras. I do that. I'm a Blu-ray. We do activations. So just talk to us. Look at the links below. We have our Twin Flame Journal workshop coming up. And you can get my book, which explains about Twin Flame phases, Twin Flame stages. And it's very, very helpful. So helpful. And... It is um, a journal, but it's also a workbook. Now, I designed this with high guidance. And here's the thing about this. This is, works well for people who don't like to journal. All you have to do is write a few paragraphs. If you want to write a mini saga, that is your prerogative. I'm not going to stop you. But the prompts are in here. I'm guided with these prompts to help you. It is explanatory, okay? This is a book you need to get rid of your doubts too, to get you on track. And it, it is in many ways a how-to. What are the table of contents? Well, when you click the link, you'll see. What is a twin flame like? What is it exactly, okay? What are the stages? What are the phases? Because there are phases and stages, okay? What are some of the things that happen? How do people awaken? I've got several types of awakenings in here. This is gleaned by me through working with pe about 40,000 people over a 15 year period. And I've made it very concise. And the link is below. When we do this workshop, we're gonna work off this book. So I hope this helps you. Please let us know, how can we help? Where are you stumped? Just talk to someone and have a great day. Bye.